And the problem that we have is we don't have time for all of our customers, right? You don't you, you have you have so many customers, you have so many people come to your shops. Uh, probably like Ing Xiong, if you are running an online business, you have a lot of uh, orders to fulfill. So the solution here is we can only focus on high value customers. Okay, but the problem here is how are you going to tell? You can't tell who is your high value customers. Yeah, there are so many customers here, right? You can't really tell who are your high value customers. So what can we do? And that's why we data scientists we develop this thing called recency, uh, frequency, and monetary model, which is called RFM. Right. So we have three main components here: uh, R, F, and M. Recency is for us to measure the, the measure the freshness of the customer activity. So meaning that how recent the customers interact with us. When was the last time your customer purchased something with you? Uh, so the example will be days since last purchase and visit. Now when I go through this slide, right? When I am going to, as I'm going through the slides, you can think about this in your own scenario because not everybody is opening a shop that sells things. Business, every business is the same, right? You buy something, you sell something. You produce something, you sell something. It's always about selling. Now, you are, you are listening to me talking about sales, talking about selling so comfortably right now, right? I wasn't like that a couple of years ago before I met Ruben. I'm just like you know, a normal tech guy. I, I don't like to sell. The selling is a bit mm, uh, awkward yeah, to me. Right? It's very difficult. You, you need to... You, you need to go ask people to take a, a, a dollar from their pocket. It's very hard. But then after that, we, we, I learned about sales. I learned about the, the technique. And then like most of you say, right, you know the purpose that you exist. So recency, is, uh, our RFM model is not only applicable to sales. It's not only applicable to your business. Okay, it's applicable to every single aspect of your life. Later, I will give you some more example. But okay, um, when when I go through the slides, just think about recency. So, if you run a website, okay, let's say you are an NGO, the the day since the last purchase and visit uh, is no longer last purchase. It could be the day since last donation is made. Uh, it could be the days since. Uh, people have have come to your association or your organization to perform some voluntary work. For example, right? I used to be from Leo Club and Lions Club, so uh, that selling something w wouldn't be wouldn't be our KPI, right? Uh, we we don't even set donation as a target. Of course, in Chinese school we do that, but in in Leo Club, Lions Club, some do that, some don't, right? Our club we don't do that, but we do want to activate as many people that come back and help us to do voluntary work. So recency is something that helps you to measure the freshness of the activity. Yeah, and the second one is frequency. So frequency measures the intensity of a customer relationship. So how frequently the user interact with us, how often they come to your shop. Uh, again, same thing, right? If you if you run, uh, let's let's not use NGO. Anyone have uh, any any different business apart from buying and selling? You can you can let me know in the in the chat section, so uh, I can give you some example about your frequency. Yeah, even. And you can use this, right, not just in um, sales activity, yeah? You can use this also in, in your leads generation, okay? Uh, before MCO, there, there are a lot of people that like to do this, right? Uh, mobility digital apps for commuters, okay? Yeah, then, then that will be the case where how, how frequent your users use your application. Yeah, say Ru Ruben have a couple of content websites, so he install. Uh, Google Analytics, so and that will tell you how often people come to your website. And when we when we talk about applications, right, there are different types of apps. Some apps are, are candy, right? Some apps are uh, vitamin. Some apps are like drugs. Okay, candy is uh is like um, candy like yeah? sugar uh, gula gula. So you you eat that you feel good. If you and when you consume too much, it is actually going to give you side effect. And vitamin are those apps that uh, is supplement. So you you wouldn't die before uh, without those applications. Like like for example, right? Uh, 
vitamin type of apps is a Spotify. Yeah, Where, uh, sometimes the stickiness is high, but usually the the frequency varies. Yeah, when you have time, you open it. When you don't have time, you don't open it. But some apps that is very sticky, right? Some apps are very addicted, like Facebook. Uh, I I always tell my my friends right. Last time people they bangun pagi gosok gigi. Now no, bangun pagi buka FB. So the first thing that they do they open FB first, right? Yeah, your 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 alarm your dreams don't wake you up. Right? It's your Facebook notification that wakes you up every morning, right? And and something like waste like that. So when you look at frequency, it's actually how frequent people use that. Of course, we are talking about business. Your most valuable customers. If uh, now it's MCO, so you can only rely on how often people visit your website. Like Ruben, right? If you want to increase people frequency to your website, then you have to constantly, continuously put out good content. Education, same thing. Real estate is the same thing, except the frequency is different, right? You you don't uh, like real estate, automotive, secondhand cars. You don't expect people come and buy cars from you every day, right? So the frequency, the duration will be different. And that leads to the next one, which is the monetary value. So monetary value will help you to measure how much do they spend, right? Uh, basically, you just you 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 just tie a, a monetary value to the activity that they they do. If you are familiar with Google Analytics, they um there is also a part where you can do and configure right. When the users have achieved a goal, and that goal doesn't mean that uh, it must uh, he or she must purchase an item, must must pay something, right? Let's say, for example, if the person has uh, spent more than three minutes on your website reading a blog article, yeah, you have achieved some goal, and that itself worth you X number of dollar, and that that X number of dollar can be uh, equated to the amount of money that you are going to spend on Facebook to bring somebody to see your blog post, for example, right? So we, we do monetary measurement, not just because we want to measure our sales or our uh, revenue, right? because we want to gauge the intention of your customer, how, how willing they are, they are going to spend and also their purchasing power because there are different types of users and there are different types of customers and their the purchasing power is different. And let's talk about games, right? Some games, uh, you know, like, uh, they, they provide in-app purchase. So those users, they come to play the games very frequent, right? They don't do in-app purchase, but they are, they are willing to see ads, okay? Uh, so their, their recency is very high. Probably the last time they log in is about half an hour ago, two hours ago. Their frequency is also very high, right? Every day they log into your games uh, three to four times a day at least. And, but then their monetary value is very low uh, because they don't buy in app purchase lah. they don't buy those items they don't go and steal people's strawberries carrot but they do uh, have very high recency and very high frequency okay so so this gives you a little bit of context about what rfm model actually is uh, so uh, one example would be customer lifetime value a customer lifetime value this concept right is is overused okay. apart from ruben i have never seen anybody is able to explain this term properly to me. Okay, I'll give you a very simple question. How do you measure a customer lifetime value? Okay, average revenue times gross margin times lifetime. Yeah, depends on product life cycle. <laughs> his son, his daughter-in-law. Okay, you, you think so far? Hmm? Yeah, regular customers with uh, happy customers. With. No, but when we talk about CLTV, usually we focus on that particular customer only. Referral, all those things, right? Uh, it's later. <laughs> TH must be, must be contractors or <laughs> you, you must be a victim of your clients, your customers do not pay on time. Eh? Yeah. Now, uh, there, are, there are a few businesses in, in the market, right? You have to understand the nature of collecting payment and... Uh, this one is a is a story for another day. Like I, I have been in different different type of businesses. So, for example, uh, I, I give the the worst 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 type of money collection first. Uh, of course, suppliers, contractors, those you have you have aging, right? You have age period, so they can take your products and then pay you three months later, six months later, nine months later. Uh, that's that's one part. Uh, so you go to restaurant. Restaurant is uh, a place where you. You can only eat first, then you pay. So 
So how fast food restaurant change the story is that you pay first only before you eat. But many people did not realize that, right? You go to a fast food chain restaurant, you pay first only you get to eat. No matter what. In fact, you pay first then only you get to see your food. You pay first then only you get to place your order, then only you get to eat your food. But most of the time, when you go to a restaurant, when you go to a, a eatery, an eatery, you usually get to eat first, order, eat first, then only pay. Yeah. Now, there are some businesses, for example, they only collect money up front, then only they deliver. So the reason why we're discussing this is because the risk is on different side. So it's not about who collect money first. Uh, that, that would be too simplistic, too naive to look at it. You should look at who is bearing the risk. Yeah. Okay, so this is something. Uh, online sales is the same thing, right? If you ask somebody to pay online first, then, then only you, you send the product like those people have been doing on WhatsApp and WeChat. That is a, a, a large few of uh, scam, right? Most people will, will just take your money and don't, don't deliver the product. Especially when your item price is too high. They just send you some dodgy items and you don't know who they are. Yeah, so they give you something. When something is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. See, uh, Ruben gave a very good example. I know that he, he, he always can explain CLTV very well. Company who sell vacuum machines until Dyson come along. So there are many, many ways to extend your CLTV. Yeah, and before that, we talk about uh, referral, asking them to come back and buy more and more, right? Those are, diff those are other different tactics. But we, today, tonight, right, we just want to focus on uh, RFMM, okay? And online sales on Lazada also. So uh, PayPal, Lazada, Shopee, all those platforms, they're big enough to absorb the risk for you. Yeah, that, that's why they, they are here. Lah. So anyway, enough of the, the concepts. So. To summarize, the ideas behind RFM is number one, customers who have purchased from you recently are more likely to buy from you again than the customers who you have not seen for a while. Okay? And the second thing is customers who buy from you are more, more often are more likely to buy again than the customers who buy infrequently. Number three is customers who spend more are more likely to buy again than the customer who spend less. Okay, the reason why we call it RFM, yeah, is because you have to rank from R first, and then you go with F, then you go with M. So meaning that uh, customers who have high recency will overtake customers who have high frequency. Customers who have high frequency will, over, uh, will, will supersede right? those who spend more. Meaning that if somebody uh, come to your restaurants and eat once in a while, they eat like two, three hundred bucks, right? Uh, order crabs, all these things. But they only come once a year. Uh, father birthday, mother birthday, anniversary only they come. Is this type of customers is a lot less valuable than those who always come to your shop. So those, those customers, they always come, but they, they probably eat a, a smaller ticket, uh, $50, $40, but probably every once, uh, once every two weekends, they will come. And recency is that the people who came last weekend is definitely a lot better than the customers that did not come since three months ago.